Hello, my name is Lisa Otaris. My business is Caring Energetic Healing and my role is to balance the mental, the emotional, the physical and the spiritual. I work, uh, oh, I've been welcomed by Prosper to be on the online prosperity show today and for me it is a great honour to be here to share the wisdom I have acquired on my journey through energetic healing and spiritual educating and doing spiritual counselling and through the angelic realm giving intuitive knowledge to people to help them to understand why things are happening in their lives such as health addictions or why their challenges are present. Now welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show and today we've brought you the energy healer and spiritual educator, Lisa. Lisa, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm very well, thank you, Prosper, and thank you very much for the invitation to join your online show. I feel deeply honored, and I'm grateful to have this opportunity to speak to the audience that may require my help. Absolutely. Well, people in the audience would actually understand um, that every single day we bring out experts in their own field um, that would help us first of all have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable and second of all have a happier existence now lisa is like i said um an energetic healer she has a business called caring energetic healing she's also a spiritual educator she's also a spiritual counselor and an angel intuitive all right so she works with people utilizing contemporary therapies um, you know, to facilitate, first of all, their happiness, their wellness, and balance. She also shares, you know, this wisdom that she has acquired during the past two decades of her own personal and spiritual journey. And now she assists people to understand, first of all, why health afflictions and other challenges are actually present in their life. And she teaches them why you know, they should know most about this. So she is on a mission to actually assist you to live the most happiest, vibrant and balanced version of yourself, enjoying life to the fullest capacity. Now, Lisa, did I say any of that right? You said it perfectly. I do, I do conduct complementary therapies, complementary or complementary to medicine. And so we classify them as alternative medicine, but they're basic, they're, they're, they're therapies that help people become balanced. So I call them complementary therapies. Uh, other than that, everything was absolutely perfect. Absolutely. Right. You did mention a, a word that maybe we might just kick off with, which is balance. All right. A lot of people are living in the humdrum of life. They are exposed to, first of all, media. They're exposed to ill information that is not even helping them, you know, have that happier existence. What is balance in any, anyone's life? Um, because some people wouldn't recognize, this, recognize it even if it showed up on their doorstep. Well, my interpretation of balance is this, and I didn't know this until I actually made the connection to my spirituality. So when we're in balance, what happens is the ethereal body, which is also known as the subtle body, the aura, most commonly known as, or the ethereal body, some people call it the spiritual body, that is surrounding our physicality, our physical body. And there are planes of that. And there are several planes, the mental, the emotional, the physical, the spiritual, the causal, and so on. And these planes contain energy. They not only contain energy, they contain information from current life and past lives. This, this knowledge and this energy that is in this place around our body called the aura becomes let us say stuck it becomes blocked when things are not right for us by that i mean when people have emotions that are negative in nature when people have emotions that are conflicting with who they really are when people absorb other people's energy and we do that wherever we go our aura becomes affected blockages occur 
And I actually, um, when people come to see me, I can actually see blocks in the aura. I see them as shadows and at the end of the healing, it is no longer present. I have seen people come to me with illness in the aura and they sh I get it shown as a black shadow. And the black shadow is generally something that is not conducive to well-being. and at the end of the energy healing, that also has been removed. And energy healing balances you. What it does, depending on what work is being done, it clears the aura, but more importantly, it works on the chakras. So we have chakras outside of our body and the chakras, they are, we have one here, one here, one here, one here. There's seven main ones, they're bright in color when they're healthy. And chakras not only control the organs in that particular part of the, the um, part of the body, they also have got past life energies. So they also can, they also um, control one endocrine organ of the body. So the pituitary, the thyroid, the thymus, uh, pancreas and so on. So they control all of the organs in that particular area of the body. Plus they also contain past life energy, memories and things that do keep us stuck. So when you're in balance, and I'm talking energetically, what happens is your aura is balanced, your chakras are balanced, which means if there's afflictions there, if there's prolapses, if there's things stuck in them, if they're not a bright color, all these things affect the way we think, affect the way we operate, they affect our life today. And balance is, in my opinion, and for me, energetic healing is where you balance the mental, the emotional, the physical and the spiritual. And that is what the work I do actually does. In addition, I give people the insight into why the affliction they have is present. Because when people are guided to me, they have something wrong with them. It could be an illness, it could be an affliction, it could be something going on in their personal life. And I give them the spiritual perspective why it's happening because everything is actually being done for us, not to us. It's been done by the soul, created by the soul for expansion of the soul's consciousness, for expansion of our growth and healing of the soul. And it does that through our spirit. So when you're in balance, you have more clarity, you're more grounded, you're more focused. Things are let us say, easier for you because you have more of a direction in what to do when things actually happen, particularly to do with illness because illness is an awakening in some form or another. So balance for me means balance on all of those levels, mental, emotional, physical and spiritual. Absolutely beautiful answer right there, uh, Lisa. But Obviously, this is something that you've accumulated, like I said earlier on, in the past decades. It wasn't always like this for you. Can you just, you know, let us know a little bit about your past and how you then um, became this balanced as you are um, at the present moment? Okay, I will do that. So prior to my awakening 21 years ago, I was a registered nurse. I was married, I had two children, a five-year-old and a 10-year-old. And when I became very sick, and I mean very sick, I actually couldn't understand why. I was helping everybody that I knew. I thought I was a good person. I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, and I didn't take drugs. And by not drinking, I, I didn't drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. And I thought, how can this be happening to me? But I was very, very ill. I went to see a naturopath that I had never seen before. We had been under the care of a naturopath because my son was very sick with asthma as a small child. He's now grown out of that. But we used to see her monthly and she would always see me, my husband, my daughter, as well as my son. And she always found me sick. And I just put it down to stress. I really did. However, when I became really ill and we were actually due to build on Monday, I went to a naturopath on Saturday that I had never met before. And this naturopath, um, that I'd never met, who was a neurologist, looked into my eyes. And the reason I went to see her was because my, our previous one, the one that we were always under, our regular naturopath was actually on leave and she had left a message, if you need to see someone, go and see this lady. So um, seeing someone I didn't know was a new experience, but she looked into my eyes and 
she actually said, you're a very sick lady. And I knew that because I was numb down one side. I had pins and needles in both feet and both hands, alternating with severe pain. I had numbness. I, had ex I couldn't sleep at night. I'd wake up and my body was just absolutely saturated in perspiration. I had sleepless nights. I had severe insomnia, which is something I didn't suffer with. And I just was so incredibly unwell. I couldn't think straight. My mind was scattered. My vision had completely deteriorated. I was only in my 30s. And I thought, what is going on? And I really thought I was going to have a stroke. She told me I was very sick. She told me that my whole body had shut down and every all my immune system was affected. And I asked her what was wrong with me. And I said, am I going to have a stroke? And she said, no. I said, well, what is wrong with me? And she wouldn't tell me. But because I badgered her, she ended up saying to me, you've got the warning signs to MS. Well, I saw that as on par with cancer because it is an incurable illness and it still is today, 21 years later. And I saw myself in a wheelchair and I thought, this can't happen. I have two small children to look after. So the naturopath gave me herbs. She gave me medicines and she asked me not to build. She asked me to give up work and she asked me to, to rest. I said to her I would do all of that. So I proceeded home and I told my husband the bad news and he was mortified. We didn't end up building. We ended up um, selling the block of land and we ended up buying a home instead, a lovely home that we lived in. But I did everything she said. I didn't work. I, I rested for one month and I, I took all of her herbs and medicines. And you know what's interesting? When I returned one month later for my second appointment, I was worse. People need to hear this. I was worse and wow. I had done everything she had said. Wow. My condition had deteriorated. Right. More pain. She actually looked and she said to me, you've become worse. And I said to her, I know. And um, I said, why is this? And she said, look, I'll give you more medicines and keep doing what you're doing and come and see me in one month. So this time when I went home, I was, so I cried all the way home. And when I arrived home, I walked to the sink I threw all the medicines down the sink and I threw the herbs in the bin. I looked up to the heavens and I said to God, I hate you for what you have done to me. This was my total ignorance. Wow. Mm -hmm. Total ignorance. And I went into the lounge and I sat there and I cried for hours. And this is when my awakening took place. When I stopped crying, I basically was sitting there and I heard voices and my eyes were closed and I saw the most beautiful, brilliant green the most beautiful royal purple intertwining in my mind, which I'd never seen in my life. And then I heard voices saying, you're very sick, but you will heal. And you're not to take medicine. And I, I opened my eyes and I said, who is this? And I heard a reply, we are the angels and we will help you. And I said, oh, I can't see you. I'm really scared because I didn't know anything then. They said, don't be frightened, but go to this cupboard. We were renting at the time because we had sold our home and we were going to build. They told me to go to a specific cupboard to take out this folder that said, you can heal your life by Louise Hayne and had talk cassettes in it. And the cassettes my husband and I had purchased at the I Can Do It seminar in the city three years before because my husband was spiritual. And we used to go to these things, but I wasn't connected. And they said, and listen to this and you'll understand why you're sick. Well, I tell you, I had epiphany after epiphany when I listened to her talk cassettes because I realised I had anger, resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness, anxiety, fear, you name it, every negative emotion you could possibly imagine. I was riddled with it. And the most important thing that I had was unforgiveness. And the minute I started doing her processes, I started to feel different. My feet weren't so numb and pins and needles seemed to be diminished. Basically, to cut a long story short, I did the tapes, 12, there was 12 cassettes and I did them three times. It took me a few days, but I just kept doing them. And once I had finished, the divine then guided me, now please go and do this workshop, this workshop, this workshop. And I was just guided to go to all these different things. Within two years, and this is the God's honest truth. I had taken no medicine. Within two years, my body had completely healed of all of my afflictions. I had the greatest clarity I'd ever had in my life. Wow. My, body, my vision was restored to normal. Great. And that's the story. Wow. That is such a, an amazing story right there. I mean, um, Lisa, you would appreciate there's quite a lot of people that are probably in the same scenario as you 
would have been, you know, you have a job and you have a family, maybe one or two kids, a husband and life is normal, but you are, you know, delivered with, you know, life shattering news like that. First, your son. And second of all, your, um, you know, the, the, the disease that you would have contracted and having to lose your job um, so that you would carry on the message. Thank you so much, um, you know, for elaborating on that. Now, obviously, I want to take you back a little bit to what you would have said. You had all these energies that were now revolving around you, the anxiety, the anger, the resentment, and you just did not know what was going on. So all of that was blocked energy within yourself. And, you know, that would have been affecting your aura or your chakras that you mentioned earlier on. And, you know, your whole physical body was probably, um, you know, relating to that, maybe your past, or maybe it was also maybe, I don't know if you had a past life that your body was trying to, you know, respond to in the form of this uh, sort of disease and um you went past that now you help people um you know to clear all of that can you just walk us through what it is that you will be doing for them you know in the in the terms of how you got past it and how other people can also heal from you know working with you so the first, so the first thing i can share with people that is really 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 important is that when something happens to you through your own physicality it's happening because it's in response to your emotions. Food definitely affects our physicality if we don't nourish it well. There's no question about that. But you know what? I was eating, I was eating a good diet. I didn't put very much junk food in my body. What it was with me was thoughts. The thoughts that we possess and that we create in our, in our mind has so much to do with how we actually feel. And negative thoughts create cells to become abnormal they and anger i have been told this categorically and i not only have been told it i have learned this at college when i went to study my diploma of energetic healing cancer is 95 percent cases anger resentment and unforgiveness and that is in 95 percent of cases the other five percent is external factors I have seen it. Every single cancer person that comes to me has got anger, bitterness, resentment. Some even have hatred, which is something I would highly recommend that people please don't hate anyone because you actually are in essence taking a poison pill and waiting for someone else to die. They're not going to die. You are poisoning yourself. Hatred is one of the most toxic emotions and it affects your physicality like I can't even begin to tell you. So when we have negative emotions, our body responds to that because our soul is wanting growth. And everything that happens to us is actually a growth opportunity. So when someone hurts you, when someone does something to you that they betray you, when someone does something to your family or a close affiliate of yours and it hurts you, this is all growth and it's coming from within your soul and the other person's soul or people's soul have co-created together in order for emotions to be felt within you. It, and, and the reason for that is so one has an awareness, releases the emotions, letting it go, forgiving the person involved or the people involved, then principally and primarily forgiving yourself. This is the process when something negative happens to you, regardless of who it is or what it is. And I learned this two decades ago. I learned that the key, the key to forgive, the key to healing your body, the key to healing any wound that has happened is acknowledgement, letting it go, forgiving the people and you, and or the person. But more importantly, forgiving yourselves. We often forget to forgive ourselves for what we have done. But, you know, there is no wrong and there is no bad. And when I say that, that sounds a bit weird. But, you know, everything is learning on this planet. We're here for growth. We're growth-seeking beings. And we've emerged onto this planet this time in this, this amazing incarnation to expand our consciousness. And the more we learn from our... I will call them mistakes, but things that happen that are perhaps inappropriate or we shouldn't have done. It's all about the soul's journey and it's 
doing it through our spirit to help us to evolve. Because as we get in touch with what is happening, the soul's expanding its consciousness as the soul is healing. Absolutely. So all these emotions happen for a reason, and it's there to help us to grow. Illnesses are an awakening in some form or another. And, you know, people say to me when they have a cold, oh, you know, I have a cold, do you think I have to do growth? And I say, well, the cold's just a cold. But you know what? If you have cancer, this is like your sign of your soul saying to you, you know, you need to go inward and find out why this is there and, and release it. And, you know, if you do, if people are sick and they actually do the process that I've just outlined, their lives change. Something's coming to me and I need to share this. This is really, really important. I'm going to give this example and, you know, my father specifically asked me to do this to help people. So my father's now deceased. And in 2007, he passed over in January. My father was a very, very good man. He was hardworking. He loved his family. And two years prior to his illness, my father had abdominal pain. He went to the doctor. He had abdominal pain and diarrhea. And he went to the doctor and the doctor said, I'll send you for x-rays anyway. It showed up that he had a mass in his bowel. So he very quickly was put into hospital a few days later because he had private cover. And they found when they did the surgery that my father had bowel cancer, stage three bowel cancer, and he had, um, it had metastasized to the liver. So that means it had spread to the liver too. So his prognosis was not good at all. He had the surgery, he was discharged, and then he went to see an oncologist and all four of his daughters, I'm one of four, we all accompanied him and the oncologist told him what they wanted to do and that was on um, chemo. And my father's decision was no. He was categoric, he said he didn't want any treatment. Then we, went, we took him to the professor. They wanted to do liver surgery. And we said to my dad, because he didn't believe in energetic healing, we said to my dad, you know, they want to do surgery. Everyone said you should have it. I, I stood back and didn't say anything. And my father said, I'm not having any more surgery. So he made his choice. And I said, well, Papa, I will help you and I'll do energy work. And he agreed to that. So my father, and this is true as God, my father comes to me for healing. He used to come to me regularly. And then I decided I wanted to take him to a naturopath as well so that he had complementary. So he had the naturopathy side, plus he had the energy side. So he went to her about three times and she gave him medicine. He, he took it and he was really good. And he was coming to me. And when they did the bloods on him, because I told him there's four people you have to forgive, because I was told these are the people that he's holding on to. This is why he has the bowel cancer, because the bowel is to do with not letting go of the past or fear right. of new experience, small intestine and large intestine, because they all have emotions attached. My father... I told him, these are the four people I've been told you need to forgive. And at the initially, he forgave them. He was really good. And he said, yes, yes, because he wanted to live. He said, I want to die. He knew it was life threatening because the doctor, the professor said, if you don't have surgery, he said, I give you three months to live at the very most six. That's wow. what he told him. We were all there when he said this. Yeah. But my father said, no, I'm not having surgery. So my father didn't want to die. So my father said, I will, I will forgive them. So we did the processes and I, I helped him. And you know what? When he had his bloods down, his, his cancer levels had gone down significantly. It was so dramatic. Wow. So we saw, we saw the change. So my father kept, I gave him affirmations to say and he would do them. And then he came weekly for healings. And this is what happened. My father was diabetic. My father loved wine. He never, ever was an alcoholic and he never drank more than a glass a day, but he loved his wine every night. So he drank wine every night and he loved meat. So the, the naturopath told him no meat because it feeds cancer, no wine because of liver cancer, and no sweets because you're diabetic. So he, my father abided by everything because he wanted to live. And, you know, after, after about a year, he got sick of not being he, he got sick and tired and i will say sick and tired so you have to say those words i can't do what i want to do i can't drink wine i can't eat meat and i can't have sugar and he said it's very hard and so he said to me i'm not doing any more forgiveness he says because i'm angry and then in september 2006 at his healing that day i'll never forget it he stood up after his healing and he looked at me and he said i'm not coming back anymore 
And I said, what do you mean? And he says to me, I want to die. He says, because this isn't a lie. He said, I can't eat what I want to eat. And he said, and I'm not going to forgive those people ever. He actually, he retracted the forgiveness. This is true as God and people need to hear this story because I'm all about the forgiveness. That's what I'm here to teach. Do you know what? He said, I'm not coming back after today. And my guidance at the time was through one of my teachers, you have to go down every day to his home and heal him because he is going to die now. That's the decision that's been made by his soul. So I went down every day and he died in January. But my father lasted 22 months and he'd be given three to six months. That's the power of energy work. Wow. He could have lived a lot longer. Yes. And my father, before his funeral, came through to my mother when my mother was on my healing bed at my home and she ch I channeled my father to my mother and my sister was present. My mother still remembers her words and he said these words, listen to what Lisa has said because if I had listened and not, if I had forgiven those people, I would be still with you and my family and not here with dead people. Wow. All right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so obviously... I mean, so sorry to hear about um, your father, but I'm really, really happy with the work that you did with him uh, in order for him to have realized what could have been. Now, this takes us back to, um, you know, what, what you would have mentioned during that story in as much as a lot of people are carrying, um, you know, a lot of uh, burden that is causing them a lot of heavy heart. Sometimes maybe it's insomnia and constant sadness and also the way that our environment has now been created is not really helping. The media is always talking about all the bad news and people can't tell what is right and what is not wrong. And um, in the way that we're now living, we've been so alienated from our family uh, due to, you know, social media. And if somebody tweets something already, you know, it, it creates all of that hatred and people just don't know how to separate themselves from the fake life that has been created for them uh, into like the real uh, spiritual and connected life. And um, one other thing that you help people with is helping them release karma. Um, it's, it's, Absolutely. Yes, it's one of those things that, you know, you, you would have done something in the past or maybe it might actually be ancestral influences like maybe what you, you are talking about there with your father, which are also contributing to the blocks that people might be going through and whatever limitations and, and sort of disruptions and problems that are in one's life. Can you also just maybe um, elaborate uh, on that part of your work there that you do there, Lisa? So, so what happens is throughout our lives, whenever a trauma happens to us, now a trauma can be an argument, an accident, a death, a separation, a divorce, Anything that happens, our soul, which by the way is located here, and the soul is the sum total of the collective consciousness of who we are. What that means is, and for people that don't believe in incarnation, I apologize, but I know it to be true that we are, we are here one of my many lives. So every single time we've had a lifetime, that is one in a being. The soul is the representation of the sum total of the collective of all of that. So that is what the soul is. And our spirit is our personality and our name. We are not our spirit and our name. Who we really are is our soul. And our soul is working through the spirit in order for it to have expansion of consciousness and healing. And I've been told on many occasions, it's not your journey, it's the soul's journey through your spirit. And this physical body, the sacred temple houses our soul. Now, whenever we have a trauma in our life, it can be anything from what I've described, accidents, sicknesses, divorce, um, death from an animal, by an animal, by uh, someone in the family. Our soul cracks, it chips. It fragments, and when it's a really severe, and I, I classify divorce as one of the most severest traumas that you can go through, because I've been through it and I know how traumatic it is, and I commiserate with anyone that goes through it, your soul actually splinters. And the first healing I do on anyone that I deal with is I soul retrieve them. And soul retrieving is, and I do this through the angelic realm, and what happens is the soul then gets restored to normal. 
and you have a sense of inner peace. It doesn't make you completely peaceful because there's many, many factors to do with inner peace. So soul retrieval helps that. Karmic debt clearing, which is what I also do. We all have come into balance karma, and I know that categorically. I clear the karmic debt and pay back what is owed without removing any of the soul's lessons or growth. I give people additional spiritual awareness. I give. I also help people to self heal from within. So when they are sick, they can actually start to heal. See. I don't know that a lot of people are aware of this, but our bodies have got the innate, I learned this at college, our bodies have the innate capacity to heal from within. We are here to heal ourselves if we're ever sick, but most people don't know this. So when you are balanced energetically, and by that I mean you must have awareness, you must be connected to, let us say, the source within you, which is why I say to people, please meditate. And if nothing else, still your mind, because when you still your mind, it's going to lower your blood pressure. It's going to have so many benefits in you. Even if you get no wisdom, it doesn't matter. Just do that because your soul, this is nourishment for the soul. So meditation is really important. But when, when I clear energy that is part of their um, life, right now like when people are sick every single person that comes to me gets soul retrieved because we've all had traumas traumas sometimes start in the mother's womb i release the male and female genetic stress i clear the trauma um, i help them with the forgiveness and help them to realize what they are needing to forgive because there isn't a person on the planet that doesn't have unforgiveness issues we've all got them it's just that we repress them because it's too painful and they sit in the subconscious. And I will tell you something else. Our physicality is a representation of the unconscious mind. If you look at people, you can tell them what's going on unconsciously just by the way they walk, by the way they talk, because it manifests in the physicality. And I know this to be true because I can see it in myself when something's going on subconsciously and I become aware of it. I see it because it manifests as pain. Pain is anger and it's generated by the soul. Why? Because the soul doesn't want you to be angry, but the pain comes forth in your body through, by the soul, through your spirit, to allow you to have the acknowledgement. I have pain. Okay, why am I angry and why do I have guilt? Once you have that acknowledgement and you get the wisdom, because each part of the body and every organ of the body has actually got a metaphysical, which is it's got an emotion attached to it. And once again, I learned all this at college at Nature Care when I went to do my diploma of energetic healing. So when some, when you get a little scary of pain, your soul generates this to give you the awareness, okay, there is anger and there is guilt. And if you don't get it, they'll give you some thump. If you don't get it, they'll give you the Mack truck and they'll give you chronic pain chronic pain and that's what chronic pain is and people with frozen shoulders which when I was nursing I used to go to so many doctors would inject them with cortisone they would be really angry people and when I think back I had no idea of any of this when I was a nursing sister but I think back all the people I nursed in the profile was so true and so right because the soul's creating everything through us and you know cancer in particular I have been told this repeatedly, is the humility disease because when a person has cancer, they have anger, resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness, quite often hatred. And when you have cancer, most people actually don't want to die. They are not ready for death. It's, it's created by the soul because it's the soul's illness created through the spirit in order for us to learn, to grow, to heal, to change, to transform and to evolve. And if you get the lesson from it, it can be, of course, healed from within or chemotherapy, depending on, because everyone's journey is different. Some people are going to go down the Western medicine route, other people the Eastern medicine, other people will turn in, other people will go totally spiritual. Mine was totally spiritual. Most people on the planet will go the Western route, and that is exactly what they're meant to do exactly what they're meant to do. And energy healing comes in and complements what they are having and balances them and helps clear the toxins but allows them still to have, because you see, we're all here going down the experience that we're meant to. I was never meant to have treatment. That's why I was told I was not to go to a doctor, but I know how sick I was and trust me, I was really sick, really sick. It's Absolutely. not exaggerated. I thought I was going to die, I was that sick. But most people will go down 
Western medicine, and that's exactly what they're meant to do. But there'll come a point where they're meant to go in here and start to ask, why do I have this? And once that connection is made, what happens is, because people want to live, they start to look externally and they start to pray to a higher power. Now, it could be source, it could be the universe, it could be the angels, it could be God. It doesn't matter who you pray to, whoever it is, is going to come in and support and help you, but you have to be humbled. That is the whole point of the illness, to humble you so that you, you actually practice forgiveness. Wow. Forgiveness of others and forgiveness of yourself, regardless of what people have done to you. And I'm there. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that. Now, you did mention a little bit earlier on, um, you know, that the body itself has innate capabilities of self-healing um yes. but you also have external healing modalities that you uh you know do conduct with people can you just walk us through you know the four modalities that you actually um you know okay. yes okay so this is what happens i want to be clear about this to everybody listening because i don't know that a lot of people are aware of this nobody can heal somebody else that's something I wanted to be clear about, okay? A lot of healers don't know this, okay? What people like me do, we are facilitators of healing other people. So we facilitate the movement of energy in other people. Or we can channel spiritual um, healing via us to other people. But in order for a person to heal, and I mean heal from within, they have to heal from within. We are facilitators of that. No one on planet Earth is a magician or let us say a saint that, like I've seen many miracles, but I am the facilitator of the miracle. Do you understand that? I Absolutely. cannot create miracles, okay? I want to make that very clear to everybody. Some healers have said, I can heal cancer that's a little bit um, misguided because I have been taught and told we are facilitators only. It takes a, cert a certain level of understanding to understand that. So energy healers come in and we facilitate the movement of energy because you know, at the end of the day, it depends entirely on the person's soul, whether they are going to be healed or not, because sometimes it's their time to transition. Right. And, and that I've seen this in my work because people have come and they say, I ask them, do you want to live? And they say, yes, but I get told their soul is ready for them to go and you're here to free them. And I've had to do that a few times. Okay. Wow. So yes, yes, absolutely. This is true. And I'm telling you because I, I've, I've actually, after 20 years, I've seen a lot and learned a lot, okay? So we are facilitators of people's healing, but we do not heal them, okay? That's something I want to be very clear about. So I've seen many miracles through the work that I do, and I've asked the divine, how can this be? And they said to me, because the person had a contract with you before they were born. And this is not just with me. There are many others on the planet with this same contract. It's, it's not only in, in complementary therapies, it's also in dentistry, medicine, law. People make agreements with people at the right time. They will be guided to the right person for them and they'll have the results. Whereas if they go to somewhere else, someone else, the results will not be present. So with healing, what I do is I work with the angelic energy because I've been attuned with that and I do soul retrieval and I give people spiritual awareness and I help to clear the karmic debt. Um, I balance them. I do amazing works with the angelic um, realm. I have crystal therapy that I work with. Well, crystals just amplify the work, but they're, they're not really necessary. They're just an amplifier. A lot of my work is done through the pendulum. So what it is, I get told this affirmation i have a book and um, it's now tailored according to my mind but basically i clear different parts of the body and i, I say the affirmation in my mind the client right. is on the desk on the table and i clear and as i'm clearing it their soul is clearing the the energy because i'm working soul to soul right i'm at a i'm at a place in my life where i literally literally I'm unconditional. I do not judge people anymore for what they have done in the past, what they're doing in the 
the current or what they even plan to do because at the bottom, at the end of the day, and the bottom line is here, every single person's soul is here for a unique mission. And you know what? Those that are the darkest and the darkest on the planet, that is their role. And it's not for me to judge that because I'm here on a specific mission and a lot of people don't like what I'm doing, helping people, right? So you're here on a mission if you're here on a specific mission it's good and if you've awoken to that that's excellent if you're not awoken what will happen is you're going to have chronic fatigue syndrome which i had for 10 years before i awakened wow but the body just does that because when you have been born to be here on a specific mission for a specific purpose and you are not living that unfortunately your soul gives you so many away things and they just get harder and harder and harder and that's just how it works Absolutely. i know that you know um prosper i went to anthony robbins with my husband i was still married three years before i got sick i loved him that much we loved him that much we went back the following year and we took my son and my sister and her son and i still didn't make the connection to where i should have in here so my soul created the illness right just so you know and i was meant to connect you see but i didn't because unleash the power within there's a very specific message there but those that are not spiritual won't know it and i had not made the connection yet so my soul then had to give me the mac truck and give me something really serious for me to start looking externally why is this happening and then go internal after i had done many many courses when i made the connection absolutely right does that all make sense? oh it does it does make a lot of sense and i really do thank you for you know this value that you're offering us because mainly this will be something that uh, somebody would sit in front of you and they would have paid you a large handsome fee for them to get all this knowledge so thank you so much for this and if you're watching this show right now just um you know acknowledge uh lisa by maybe um a like or also just uh subscribing to this channel because as it is lisa is pouring her heart her soul um, and also her knowledge for us to actually really be, do, and have a happier existence there. So thank you so much. Now, Lisa, obviously, um, in terms of, you know, all the work that you've done, the one testimonial that we've heard back is your father coming back to you. Again, sorry to bring this up and, um, you know, letting your family know that um, he should have listened to you. Now, what what other sort of, um, life-changing moments have you experienced with, um, you know, people that you've worked with and uh, what, what sort of response are you getting from people after you've done a couple of sessions with them or what sort of testimonials are, are present for your work? Okay, Prosper, I see transformations take place in people's lives where they say, I'm just a different person. After their first healing, because I see a person once, then again a week later, then again a week later. So that I do three healings. However, when people come from overseas, I do three healings in a week because so they don't want to stay forever. And um, the same work is done. And then if they choose to, they come back and have a monthly balance. But after the, the first healing, people are different. After the second, they're even more different. After the third, they're more balanced, they're more focused, they're more grounded, they have more awareness because energetically there has been a shift that has taken place. Their aura has been cleared, their chakras have been cleared. And what I see in people is literally transformations. And I'm talking where they say to me, I feel so different, like I sleep better, the right. pain has gone, the pain has diminished, my appetite's back, um, my relationship is better. Because they don't know, most people don't know about forgiveness. And the thing I haven't mentioned is appreciation and gratitude to Forgiveness, appreciation and gratitude, people, they are the three golden golden keys to a happy life because not only are we meant to forgive ourselves and other people, but when we give appreciation and gratitude, we tend to give the good things only, but I've been taught, Lisa, give appreciation and gratitude for all the bad that happens in your life, for all the negative, all the betrayals, because look at what you've learned from it. Look what it has done for you. Look at the humility it has created in you. 
and look how unconditional you have become without these people being in your life you would never have become this so for every challenge that you get given in your life whether it's the worst possible thing see it as an opportunity for growth see it as an opportunity to change and what have you learned from that because you know what your soul the soul creates these things in order for us to grow and the miracles i've seen through people's transformations i can't even begin to tell you people that are in chronic pain that suddenly their 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 bodies are no longer in chronic pain people that have got issues that have a deep-seated going back to their childhood about anger bitterness resentment and unforgiveness when the forgiveness is done it's like a load is lifted off their shoulders and people that have got chronic illnesses that they've had for a very long time that suddenly becomes resolved like how do you explain that it's simply because they've got the awareness and they work with the energy, they work with the soul. And you don't have to be aware of it, just follow the protocol that I set for them and tell them what to do. There are so many things. I love tapping. People may know it as thought field therapy. I'm a thought field therapy practitioner, but I don't do that. I love the EFT, emotional freedom techniques. So people listening, if you want something that I think is gold, look up emotional freedom technique. Tapping, tapping by Nick Ordner. This has been part of my toolbox for the last 20 years. I love it. I've been using it since I learned it at, when I was at Nature Care and I use it every day of my life. I tap every night before I go to bed and when I do growth, I tap it after growth because what it does, tapping they've equated to when you have decay on your teeth and you brush your teeth, well, decay is removed but when you tap you're breaking down chemicals that have been created in your body from negative emotions so people i highly recommend that more than i can tell you tapping is a fantastic thing another thing i highly recommend to people is the hopo panono prayer i learned this only about six months ago and it's a prayer that you say and dr len is the founder of this and dr len was invited to go and work in a hospital uh, at hawaii and this hospital um, ward that he was invited to go to was full of criminally insane people and no one wanted to work there because it was so dangerous and they had the staff had to walk with their backs against the wall and you know dr len said i'll go and work there he agreed but only if he could work under his terms and his conditions and the authorities agreed and do you know this man went to that hospital he did not see any of the patients at all all he did was he viewed their files he looked at their files and every day he cleaned himself and he said these words and these are the most powerful words they're very high vibration the words are please forgive me i'm sorry i love you thank you so these words can be said in any order any order at all and what you're doing is you are you are forgiving memories you're saying to the divine please forgive me i'm sorry i love you thank you and because the memories from our past and they're not always from this lifetime because they're sitting there in the subconscious but more importantly the superconscious the superconscious is where the soul resides i did a big assignment when i was at college on this and i know a lot about it the superconscious is where the soul resides and the soul is generating everything and and the soul brings the emotions and the memories up from past lives why because it wants them healed it does it through opportunities for growth whether it be arguments afflictions sicknesses divorces whatever it is so whenever a memory comes to the surface what you do is you just say please forgive me i'm sorry i love you thank you in any order and you you will see amazing things happen but not just to you but externally because you know what dr glenn dr len said that that whole ward and some of them were criminally insane, never to be released, closed down, closed down, everyone was discharged. Now, I asked the divine, how does this happen? And they said to me, it's called divine miracles, as you see in your work, they're divine miracles. And they said to me, you keep doing this, and I do it all the time. I do it in the shower, I do it when I'm driving, I'm constantly cleaning, because as I'm cleaning me, there's an outward transference of energy to other people. And 
I have been told this is my life and you will need to do this for at least 15 years to help the people you're meant to help. And I've been doing it ever since I've learned it. I've seen changes in people around me already. They don't know, but they just come to me and say, this and this has happened. And they say, I can't account for it. Well, I know what's happened because as I'm cleaning me, they're getting the effects. Dr. Glenn, Dr. Len said he had created what he's, what, all these people were doing and had done he created it because it was part of him and as he cleaned him they became healed wow it took four years for that hospital to close down and you know i was told that when i did his course they said you are now an instrument for this as well so i've been doing it and i love doing it i get working at one o'clock in the morning sometimes three o'clock in the morning and I, I get asked to clean people are needing my help and i just do it and i don't know who or where they are but i just get asked to do it and i do it because that's the mission that's absolutely. the mission i'm here to do be a, be of service helping people absolutely absolutely because we're here to live we're here to learn and we're here to contribute and a lot of people don't even go past the leaving aspect and the learning part of which you have done quite a lot of. And now you're contributing with us here. I really, really am humbled to actually share the same space as you, as we are contributing this, um, you know, magnificent information uh, that you are delivering to us there, Lisa. Now, Lisa, if you look outside your window right now, you probably have a lot of people clamoring to get the healing that you're talking about and they just can't wait. And um, obviously with your, the way you work, um, you know, you would want people to maybe set up an appointment first. Let us know how, if somebody is, you know, has been listening to this show right now and is really thinking of how to get a hold of you so that, you know, you can help them, um, you know, cleanse their aura or just really, really, um, you know, get aligned to who they are using their chakras or whatever healing modalities um, that you might have in store for them. What's the best way, Lisa, for people to get a hold of you? So um, my, the best way is to email me um, and my, um, or look at my website so you see exactly what I do. My website is www.caringenergetichealing.com and my email address is lisa at caringenergetichealing.com and if you email me, I will then respond to you and, follow, and I'm very happy I'm very happy to give your audience a 10 minute free consultation. Thank if you. If they are wanting to Thank you. connect to me, um, I will offer this service to them and they can ask me any question they would like and I will tell them how I will be able to help them because there's no one that I can't help. This work, we're energetic beings. We are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience with human body. And when they tell me the affliction that they have, I can, I can very rapidly tell them what the emotions are and how I can help them. Absolutely. Well, obviously, this has been a phenomenon session that you've just um, afforded us here there, Lisa. I can't thank you enough. Is there any sort of last parting words that you might want to um, you know, um, you know, empower us and just to let us know that, um, you know, whatever we are going through is only temporary and, you know, having to deal with what you went through and people like yourself and, you know, everything can be, you know, um, healed. As you say, the body has an innate capacity in and of itself to initiate uh, healing from within. What I would like to say to people, which I think is really important is, it doesn't matter what your past has been. Your past is your past. And when you dwell in that energy, you're a hostage to those emotions and you're actually a victim to that because cons energy is constantly in motion. And when you are thinking about the past, you're expanding negativity and this is not conducive to wellbeing. The present is right here and now. My, my advice to people is live in the present moment. The future has not been written. The future can change at the drop of a hat. Live in the present moment. Think about your future, but don't give too much attention to it because it changes. And my advice to people is live each moment as if it's the last day of your life. Live it to the fullest. And if you do have an argument with someone, never go to bed at night, ever, 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 without forgiving 
that person. You don't have to do it to their face. As long as you forgive Lynn here and you make peace with them here, you are doing yourself such a service that I can't even begin to tell you. I never go to bed at night without clearing anything that's been a lower density than love from my body ever, ever, ever. I have, all, I have an hour's worth of affirmations and prayers that I do helping people and helping helping those that I know I have to help. More importantly, clearing myself of all negativity, maintaining my vibration high at all times because, you know, when you're at peace with yourself, amazing things happen. But when you're at war with not only you but other people, life is not so good. May I just, this is coming through, may I just um, mention this? This is really, really um, important for me to share this. Absolutely. We are being faced at the moment with opportunities for growth every second of every day. And what it is, is timelines are being created. So when something happens to you, whether it be uh, something's happened at work and there's been conflict with someone, or you've had an accident and things are not going right for you, you have choice. We can go a timeline gets created with every opportunity that's taking place. And what happens is we have choice whether we take path A, the spiritual path, or path B. And path A is where you look at the growth opportunity, you have the awareness, and you you let it go, release it, and you actually you actually forgive people involved or person involved, plus you forgive yourself and move on. That's path A and that's what your soul wants. If you choose path B, that's where you become angry, resentful, bitter. You go to vindictiveness, spitefulness. And what you're creating when you're doing that, you're not only incurring karma, because karma is what goes around, comes around, and it's real, but you're also affecting your body, your soul's not at peace, your spirit's not at peace, people around you are affected. Because when you do anything or say anything about someone, it's not only that person, but their whole entourage is affected, their spouse, their children, because the soul knows and they all they all communicate with each other. So for every growth opportunity that's happening, there's a timeline that is being created and we have choice as to what we choose. And I always choose the path of peace, forgiveness, to release, always. Path A. Path B is the other path. And I'm just sharing this today because since I've learned this and I've been aware of this, my life has dramatically changed because holding on to negativity does nothing but cause disease. And when you put that word together, it causes disease. And I'm at the point in my life where I don't do as I am guided from within. I actually can't walk. I'm in, riddled with pain and I, I'm not even exaggerating that. I can't get out of bed when I'm not aligned with my true authentic self my truth my integrity and my authenticity and i'm sharing this today because you get to a certain level but once you've made the connection to your higher self there's no going back and that's that's what's happened so i'm sharing this with people just to let you know that these timelines are real and i always choose the path path a that of peace and forgiveness of all all concerned Absolutely. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it for the world because I tell you what, it's a beautiful place to live from. Forgive yeah. everyone, forgive yourself for all wrongdoings. Because you know what? It's all it's all about growth. When we leave here, when we when it's our time to finish on this planet and we've 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 completed our mission, we take nothing with we don't take anything with us. We don't take money, homes friends all we take is the growth that we have done which is going to serve us for our future incarnation so the more people are aware of that i tell you what life is so much happier absolutely me, I tell you. absolutely I hope I people today wow you absolutely have and i'm just gonna segue from the last beat that you talked about that when we leave the earth, we never take anything with us. Because obviously, I've, I don't think in my entire existence and in the audience's entire existence, I've never seen a hearse pulling a trailer. So when you die, all you get to take is what you actually have given off um, of yourself. So I can't thank Lisa enough for having given us your time your knowledge and your expertise on this show today because 
if there's a person out there that's seeking to feel better, that's seeking to be more peaceful with themselves, more confident, more energized, and more loving towards oneself, all you got to do is what Lisa says. Sit down every single day and say out this prayer. Please forgive me. I am sorry. I love you. And Lisa, thank you so much. It is an absolute pleasure and an honor for me to be on your show, Prosper. And I hope that I've been able to contribute in some way or form to people's well-being and happiness and balance. I really do, because that was that was the mission here today. And if I've accomplished it, I'll be very happy. Absolutely. I think we have and we shall be noticing the comments in the comment section below as people are going to be throwing themselves trying to get a hold of you because you have really really showed us a lot of value and opened up a few minds here thank you so once again there lisa thank you very much prosper good evening thank you